a Family Guy live action movie would just be Ted, and Peter would be Ted, and <laughs> Mark Wahlberg would be like Chris, I guess. No, Peter would be that guy we saw at Dragon Con. <laughs> Well, that is Peter. That is the real life <laughs> Peter Griffin. <laughs> so who better to play him in the movie? That's true. Brian I... would be Ted. <laughs> no, because, uh, I mean, I guess, yeah, but personality-wise. You... Ted it... could be a fantastic actor. You Ted don't know. Could. I mean, we saw that whole huge dance number in the beginning of Ted 2, mm-hmm. which, I mean, he's got chops. Oh, yeah. That's all I'll say. For some reason, when you said that, that whole huge dance number, I thought of the dance number from the end of Bayonetta. <laughs> Why? I don't know. That's where my head goes when I think of dance numbers. <laughs> it's just Bayonetta doing her weird thing and, like, cut to Ted dancing with <laughs> Baby Netta. <laughs> yes. They're the perfect size for each other. God. Are we recording any of this? Yeah. Yeah, we oh, are. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good one. We started talking about this, and then I realized we should have cold opens in our Big Stupid podcast. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> By the way, welcome to our Big Stupid <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Yeah, our big stupid podcast, episode one. <laughs> yeah. Did we agree on a name? I don't even remember. I think it was just Epic Ghost Podcast. Was it Epic Ghost Podcast? Was it Epic Ghost Punchcast? Was it Epic Ghost Pod Punch? I don't think Punch needs to be in the name. No? No. Because I like, I, I think Epic Ghost Punch is a good name for our channel, mm-hmm. but uh, Punch doesn't need to be there. Like, I think Epic Ghost Cast is good. Epic Ghost Cast or Epic Ghost Podcast? If you like podcasts, that's fine. Because I, th- I, I think, because it works like it still has the P in there. You know? Yeah, it still has know. a P in there. And, and everything's better with a little P. Everything. You know? I, I like a little bit of P and everything. Yeah, that's fine. God. <laughs> Whatever. You started this. <laughs> By the time this goes up, we'll, we'll just write something and then yeah. we'll have it forever. Yeah, the, the people listening to this will know before we do. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It's weird. Time travels like that. I know. So, Rob, why the hell are we doing this? I don't know, you brought this up. <laughs> yeah, you know, what it is is every time you come over to record stuff for our YouTube channel, we just kind of bullshit for a little while anyway, so it's like, why not record it? Yeah. We both have, like, a long, sordid history <laughs> with podcasting, going back years, so it just needs something that's fun and casual and, yeah. you know, we can do regularly. Yeah, and you're doing uh, the podcast Dan's Fandom. Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, really? I noticed it hasn't been updated in a while. Yeah, it, it was one of those like it was one of those like eyes are bigger than your stomach kind yeah. of deals where like I was, I was intending to do like a weekly podcast at first, mm-hmm. and then I I put in all the prep work to make an episode, and recorded it and edited it down, and I'm like shit, all of that work made a five minute episode. Yeah, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but. I feel like that's too little for a weekly thing, so if I can do, like, twice a week, all right, that's good. And, and like, I made a bunch in advance so that I would have, like, two weeks in the can, but it eventually just caught up. Everything you do before recording it is exactly as time-consuming, whether you're making a five-minute show or a 20-minute show. Yeah. And I just got to the point where I couldn't keep up the schedule, so I'm like, all right, let me cut back to once a week. And somehow that just killed all of my enthusiasm to do it. Okay. But there's still, you got like 12 episodes. Yeah. Or something like that. And they're, they're fantastic episodes. I'll so. probably still like put them up on the channel or something yeah. at some okay. point. Yeah. They're, they're great. So if you can find them, listen to them. They're amazing. Yay. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing that. You, you ruined our first episode, Rob. I thought you were, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. This is this is primarily when we communicate with each other. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Every yeah. week we just show up and like, oh, you're still alive? Yeah. Explain how. <laughs> <laughs> Last week you invited me over and I showed up and you were like, I didn't know you were coming. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Uh, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> <laughs> then I just locked the door and turned off all the lights in the house. <laughs> yeah, that was really rude. <laughs> Uh, so how are we doing this? Are we going to do, like, what have you been doing with your week session? We, we could. I mean, okay. it, it'll be a pretty free form. Yeah. We'll try, we'll try to rip off other people as little as possible, <laughs> yeah. but no promises. Yeah. <laughs> that seems to be how these, uh, these video game podcasts go, though. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, when we first started doing, like, YouTube and stuff, I was super concerned about not blatantly ripping off, like, like, we are both, you're a big friend, big you're a big friend. You're a big. 
you used to be you. And I was like, <laughs> you're a big fan of the best friends. You always were. Mm -hmm. You got me into them. Yeah. And then when we started doing our channel, one of my fears was like, oh God, are we just going to be regurgitating the best friends, you know? And we did. <laughs> and, we, and we did, but I think we've well, gotten... First, we, we've gotten better. We've gotten away our from that, yeah. first few... Uh, LPs were just repeating their jokes over and over again. And we've gotten better. Yeah. We've gotten certainly a lot better. But, like, you think about it within the context of the bubble you live in, mm -hmm. whereas the majority of my YouTube watching was them for a while. So, of course, I'm like, well, everybody's going to pick out immediately that we're copying off of them. Yeah. But then, like, once you start seeing more stuff and you realize just how much is out there. Yeah. There could conceivably be people that run into us that have never heard of them. Oh, yeah. And even if, even if it is like, oh, well, they're just copying off these guys, something that didn't occur to me until much later was that their podcast, which is a great podcast, I love it, Yeah. is exactly <laughs> the giant bomb cast. Yeah. <laughs> in every conceivable <laughs> way, right down to the length of the episode. Yes. And you know what? Who cares? They're both two different shows that give two different kinds of entertainment that are both both great. Yeah, they both have completely different opinions, and it doesn't matter. Everybody rips off everybody. Yeah. And we're all just trying <laughs> to get out there. Hell, going even further back into my podcast listening, Comic Geek Speak mm -hmm. does a Book of the Month Club, which they flat out say, we stole this from Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes down to it, everybody just steals from Oprah. <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. You get a podcast. You get a... <laughs> that was awful. That was awful. So, so, yeah, so, yeah, what the hell's been going on in your life? Anything? Uh, since, I don't know how far to go back. <laughs> you know, because we've never done one of these before. Just, just last week. Last Anything? week, <laughs> uh, I've been playing a lot of The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I was watching... I was watching The Best Friends. Uh, yeah, really? <laughs> really? They were playing uh, Bloodborne again, and I wanted to play some Bloodborne. But... So, of course, you played, <laughs> you popped in The Binding of Isaac. But I, I gave you my copy of Bloodborne. That's right. Do you want yeah. it back? You can go play uh, it. Uh, no. I better not. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the idea... I like the idea of playing Bloodborne more than the act of playing Bloodborne. <laughs> I haven't started. I'm afraid. Yeah. But uh, I thought, like, I was going through my PS4 library, and I thought, like, what games do I have that are like it? And I came upon The Binding of Isaac, and at first I was like, that's nothing like it. But it's a randomly generated roguelike with permadeath. Now, when you say roguelike... Uh, every level is randomly generated, and there's permadeath. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's like a roguelike, except it's a roguelike. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just trying to sound smart. I said the same thing three per times. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, every room you go into is randomly generated. Uh, the only thing that's the same is the final boss. It is always the same. Okay. It's always mom. <laughs> Have you, you've never played The Binding of Isaac? I haven't. Is uh, that the one where, like, you're a little baby fetus or something? Yeah, you're, you're Isaac, and as you do more things, you unlock different characters. You can unlock, uh, Lazarus, you can unlock Azazel. They're all different costumes, though, that Isaac likes to wear, which is interesting. Hmm. And this is the game that the Super Meat Boy creator made after Super Meat Boy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just as hard, basically. But you can get different items along the way that make your runs easier or more difficult. So it's like, uh, there's this boss monstro, and he'll do something like he'll be, like, charging up his breath, and he'll, like, vomit out this blood at you. So you can get an item called Monstro's Lung, which will allow you to do the same thing, which is really powerful, but it takes, like, three seconds to charge up. So normally you have a shot that's kind of like a machine gun. It's your tears, by the way. You're crying out bullets. <laughs> it's super dark. You're a baby trying to fight off your mom from killing you. That's the allegory of this entire game. Yeah. but uh, So it's a really powerful shot, but if you don't charge it up, you're screwed. And enemies are constantly trying to kill you. So there are some items that are great, some items you don't want to pick up, and you, it's really hard to tell what they are unless you memorize what every item looks like. Hmm. There are also pills that you can get that boost your character up, and if you haven't... I, I realize that you have to beat the game while taking the pills before you realize what they are. Okay, so this is... It, this game is entirely kind of try it out and see what happens. Yeah. Like, no, it doesn't really tell you yeah. stuff. So it's like, I picked up a pill, and it's like, it's white on both sides. And 
it on the coin uh, you can hold the pills for as long as you want you can only hold one at a time so it's like i picked up this pill white on both sides i don't know what it is so i took it and then i'll say like speed up or something like that i don't know if that's actually what that pill does but i'm just using that as an example also this game is like five years old mm-hmm. so i'm i'm just getting spoilers I'm, rob <laughs> I, i'm just really getting into it now so anyone who's played this game is listening is probably like yeah we know come on but uh so I, I took the pill, and then, like, next time I got the pill, it'll say that in the corner. Instead of just the question marks that were there. But if I die and then go back in and I pick up the same pill, it'll still say question marks. So I have to beat the game after taking that pill. Hmm. And then next time I pick it up, it'll say that. Okay, so it's impossible for you to get that information the first time through. Yeah. Huh. You just have to memorize what they look like. Interesting. Yeah. Do you feel like you would want to go back through a second time after being it the first time? Oh, yeah. I've already beaten it a couple times. Because it, it takes, like, a half hour to get to Mom. And then the first time you play through, if you defeat Mom, you unlock the womb. <laughs> hmm. Which is, you play through again, and you get to Mom. And then there's another stage, which is the womb. And then you fight uh, another boss, which is usually death. Sometimes a different boss. And uh, then you get to Mom's heart, which you defeat, and then you get the, the hidden ending. This is Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Binding of Isaac just had Mom as the final boss. This had a bunch of different unlockable characters. And they just came out with Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. <coughs> but right now, that's just a PC exclusive. And I'm playing on the PS4. It sounds like the Super Meat Boy guys had some things they needed to work yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Ed McMillan. Because this isn't Team Meat Team. It's just Ed McMillan. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> and there's something, um, every time you beat uh, Mom's Heart, you get an Eden credit. And every Eden... <laughs> it's Assassin's Creed! <laughs> no, it's not a piece of Eden. No, no, it is. <laughs> but every Eden credit gets you one run with Eden. But, uh, and he's a character with random stats. Oh. So it's like, it's like Isaac is, he's basically the Mario of the group. He has, he has average run speed, average damage, something like that. And uh, then there's uh, Lazarus, who has average everything, but when he dies, he comes back one time with one health. Okay. So it's kind of like there's like there's like a Mario, there's a Luigi, there's a Peach, all that stuff, you know? They're, every character has benefits and downsides. Eden has random stats. Hmm. And I don't know what happened if you beat it with Eden. I haven't done it yet. I'm so excited. <laughs> and uh, when I get my PC, I want to get uh, Afterbirth and see what's different in that. Nice. Did your PC come yet? Did no. You... It was supposed to come on the 10th. And it hasn't. We're recording this on the 15th, I think? Ah, uh, yeah, 14th. 14th, yeah. And I called them, and I said, what the hell? It was supposed to come on the 10th. And they said, we don't give delivery dates. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, you totally do. <laughs> we no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. But I, I was like... Okay, I guess I misunderstood the information. And, like, I keep um, keep checking the website because they have, like... You know when you order from Domino's, they have that, like, pizza... The pizza tracker? Yeah. You were looking for the pizza tracker for no, your computer? No, they have the pizza tracker for my computer. Perfect. Yeah, and, uh... <laughs> but it's been days. It's been ten days since the last update. And, like, the last thing they said was, we've gathered all of the parts. Which, I don't know why they didn't have all the parts to begin with. And the next step is assembly is complete. But it's been 10 days and they've been assembling the computer. I don't know if it's like a jigsaw puzzle or something. I feel like if they just sent me the parts, I could have assembled it in this time. But whatever. And it still hasn't arrived. Anyway, Binding of Isaac is awesome and we're probably going to play it eventually. (laughs) Cool. Well, in that same vein, I've been playing... uh, What was this called? This has a weird name. I I always forget this. It's called Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds Overdrive. What the hell is that? It's this really weird stylized anime chibi beat-em-up. Okay. Where it's like your sister or something gets kidnapped to another dimension by your evil clone. And you have to go in and fight your way through all these like what I would describe as hipster demons (laughs) and weird nightmare monsters. (laughs) And but it's it's one it's. I've never seen so many things on a screen at once before. (laughs) Between, like, the tens of enemies that pour out, and the bins full of (laughs) coins and XP things that come out. Also, this has fighting game controls and and, a skill tree and XP that you have to apply. (laughs) Oh my god, what is this for? Uh, It's on PS4. Nice. 
and I don't know if all beam ups are this way, but like like as you collect stuff, every time you die or clear a stage, it takes you to like a level up screen. So like if you suck, you can conceivably keep replaying it and getting stronger. That's awesome. Except for when you get to a boss you can't beat, and there's no drops, so oh you're God. just kind of stuck until you get better. <laughs> no, all beat em ups are not like that. And at one point, I'm like, okay, I hit, I hit the second boss, and I can't beat her. Oh my god! And then I just barely do. And then the boss after that is her again with a giant dragon. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. It's crazy, and it's like I'm finding moves <laughs> by accident. <laughs> it's one of those games. Is there a move screen? There's not a move. Well, there kind of is. And by that, I mean there's a 25-page <laughs> <laughs> menu that tells you how to do these things, and each move has a paragraph describing how to do it. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> what was that game called? I, there's no way to know. Okay. <laughs> it's like Hyper Over Phantom Drop... Uh... <laughs> Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds Overdrive. It's amazing you just remembered that. <laughs> it is. All by myself. Yeah. So not a lot has been happening in terms of like video game stuff. No, because everything came out uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, between the Game Awards and the PlayStation yeah. Experience. I did find three-ish things. Okay. Well, I, I want to say I also uh, I also listened to the Welcome to the Night Vale audiobook. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is it good? Past week. It was phenomenal. Is, yeah. is it like a long episode of the show, or is it... Kind of, but they also, in between parts of the novel, they have uh, they have Cecil Baldwin on the radio talking. Hmm. And yeah, it, it's weird because they have the characters in the book. The the audiobook, the reason I listened to the audiobook instead of reading it, I knew it was narrated by Cecil Palmer, who is the voice of Night Vale. Of course. The podcast. And uh, we're both huge fans of the Welcome to Night Vale podcast. Uh-huh. And uh, it's weird because they will talk about how much they love listening to Cecil on the radio, but it's Cecil talking. And uh, it's weird because I'm like, "That's you! Stop referring to yourself in the third verse." Oh, just, okay. It, oh, it's, it's, it's all it's all him. Yeah. It's not, okay. Yeah, and he does kind of different voices for the different characters, and he does a really great job of it. This isn't that awkward, like the Watchmen thing, where that one guy <laughs> did all the voices no, for like no. the motion comic or something. No, but it it's great because like when. It's like, I think it's every time there's a new part. You know how, like, books have, they're cha- separated into chapters and parts? Yes, I've heard of books, yes. Yeah, well, not all books do it. Some of just, them just have chapters. Uh-huh. But I think it's every time there's a new part. Because they don't separate them. He he, he says every time it's a new chapter. But uh, every time it's a new part, I believe it's that's when he he's on the radio again. Okay. Because uh, when he's on the radio, it, it's just like an episode of the podcast. And occasionally Carlos will be there, and it's the guy who does Carlos's voice. Oh, okay. And Old Woman Josie will be there, and it's Old Woman Josie's voice. During the radio section? Yeah. Okay. But, like, when Old Woman Josie is talking in the book, it's just it's just Cecil doing a voice. Okay. Yeah, and Carlos, it's just, Carl- it's just Cecil doing a Interesting. voice. Interesting. Yeah. Because I listened to the, the podcast episode, just called Epilogue, where it's an epilogue to the book, mm-hmm. which... I didn't put together at first, but then I did, and I'm like, oh, because, like, half of the... He keeps coming back to saying things like, this might have something to do with the book you read. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I waited, uh... I finished it last night, and I then listened to Epilogue, because I listened to, like, ten minutes of that episode, and I thought, I should really finish the book first. <laughs> and then I listened to Epilogue, and it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I... I could see how the episode would still be good outside of it, but it, it's cool because there's it leaves some stuff hanging. Did they? Because and don't reveal it, but like I think the epilogue episode mentioned we found out who the man in the tan jacket is. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's satisfying. It's good, but okay. you can tell that the first couple times they introduced him because it's been going on for the podcast has been going for three years now yeah and you can tell the first time that they introduced him they didn't know what to do with him yeah or they had different ideas and it, there was some stuff that like they could have done better I feel like yeah. or like I don't know like there's two chapters that take place in the library 
Huh. And they're fantastic. Cool. It's, it's terrifying. Because something that Night Vale has had a weakness at, in my opinion, is whenever they try to do something big, mm-hmm. it comes off as not that great. Yeah. And I don't know if that's just because they're so effective at build-up, mm-hmm. but, like, whenever the town rallied against Strexcore or something, it was just sort of like, it wasn't very interesting, and then it was just kind of over. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, all right. Yeah. No, it it was it was really good, but uh, I don't know. I felt like it could have been great, you know. Yeah. Something that disappointed me, and maybe it shouldn't have, was just the ending was just super happy, and Night Vale isn't super happy. You do hate joy. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't uh, I don't think this is a spoiler, but like the the very last scene is just a family holding hands and laughing. And huh. I was like, that's just that's not Night Vale, you know. <laughs> Usually it's. It's it's like it's happy in the way that you would fake a smile. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I don't know. I I really <laughs> enjoyed it, but uh, yeah, like it could have been great. Okay. Yeah, like, it's definitely worth reading. I loved everything with the man in the tan jacket, like all the mystery and stuff leading up to him. Cool. That was great. The reveal of him was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like, everything you just said. Like, the suspense oh. and the build-up is fantastic. The reveal is always disappointing. <laughs> uh, it's like the whole, the old horror movie thing of, if like, you don't show the the killer or don't show what's chasing you, then the audience can fill in whatever yeah. they want. Whatever you can imagine is always scarier than what you can show. Yeah, and like, because some people will be like, like, oh, it's just an alien. Eh, whatever. And yeah. other people will be like, holy shit, he has Baraka arms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you want to talk about news now, I'm guessing? I get Well, that wasn't on there, but... Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Well, maybe we should talk about that. Yeah, let's talk, because they, they came out that with... Because that wasn't this week, but that, that's that still w- huge. Yeah, like, they came out with the second combat pack, which is DLC characters for Mor- Mortal Kombat X. Mm-hmm. Which, is that... Is that a thing? Is does that mean Mortal Kombat Ten is coming after X? <laughs> <laughs> Are they pulling a Metal Gear? I think they might be. Yeah, yeah. This isn't actually. Those aren't actually the Mortal Kombat characters. <laughs> Johnny Cage is actually making a movie. They all and... had plastic surgery. Yeah, <laughs> or th- some of them are clones. Some of them are cyborgs. <laughs> some of them are cyborgs. Yeah, <laughs> and... but not the ones you think. <laughs> it's gonna. Be, it's like half of this roster makes sense to me. In that everybody was, was like, oh my god, they should put Xenomorph in there. And they did. Mm-hmm. And they and Maximilian has been saying that they gotta put that tribe in for a while. Yeah, which is, they took three of Mortal Kombat's robot characters and just mushed them into one character. Yeah, which is awesome. I can't believe he was right. I never thought they would actually do that. <laughs> I don't even know who these people are. But it's like, in Mortal Kombat, like, the, in the current Mortal Kombat, you pick your character. And then you pick like what fighting style which of these three fighting styles do you want to use and those each come with their own like defensive and offensive options for this one you pick your fucking robot (laughs) and each each fighting style option is a different robot character from mortal Kombat because they're basically just palette swaps anyway Mm -hmm. and and that you know it's a really cool idea i'm really that's one of those ideas that usually a fan has but it's too good for it to actually yeah. be in the game. That's why I never thought they'd do it, because like, when Max said it, I was like, oh, that's so cool, they're never gonna do it. And then they put in Leatherface, for who the fuck knows why. I know. <laughs> and who... The only person in here who I don't know who he is is the one that I assume is a classic Mortal Kombat character. Who... Like, who is he? Bo Vai Cho. He is a drunken master fighter. fighter. Isn't he... He's like Jackie Chan? And, except really fat. <laughs> and actually drunk all the time and like he'll vomit on people and like he vomits on the floor to make it slippery so that people can't walk on it he's disgusting and nobody really likes him i think liam from the best friend uses him a lot because <laughs> like i'm watching the trailer it's like it's the reveal of like leatherface comes out with his chainsaw and cuts someone in half and then the, and, like a xenomorph pops out and then this robot does his robot things <laughs> then some dude gets up off a bar floor and stumbles <laughs> out and like it's, it's like, it's like, monster, 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 and that's Larry. <laughs> like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. Why is he with this group of people? My favorite thing from that trailer, though, was, like, Baraka shows up, 
and like the crowd goes nuts because it was revealed at at the Game Awards, and it was like, oh yeah, Barack is finally in the game, and then there's, and then a chest burster just pops out of his chest, and it's like, fuck you, fans, Barack has never <laughs> been in this game. Because people were assuming he would be in like the next wave or something, yeah. weren't they? Well, um. Ed Boon said that with, like, Rain and some of the other characters that were in story mode, but not playable. Like, you could fight them in story mode. Yeah. They weren't playable. Barack was one of them. And he said, maybe we'll do something like a story pack. So Baraka may still be in that, because there's, like, an army of Baraka. I don't know if Baraka is already plural. I, it sounds like one of those plural. It sounds like sheep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so he might still be in that. I mean, I imagine they're going to use as many characters as they can mm-hmm. going forward, especially if they're only doing, like, four per pack kind of thing. That sounds like they want to, like, draw it out. Yeah. Is this coming out in February? I don't know. I don't know when the release date is. That, is. Like, would they want to try and grab attention when Street Fighter V comes out? Street Fighter V? Five is the next one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I would imagine, yeah, they probably want to do that. Because a lot of people who can't afford Street Fighter V... <laughs> We'll probably go back to old reliable MKX. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was thinking about picking up MKX again the other night. Yeah? Yeah. Go buy a second copy for no reason? <laughs> no, I mean <laughs> picking up the controller and playing MKX. Oh, okay. Yeah, to see if I can still hold my own online. Do you still... You can't. No, do you, I can't. Do you, do you still use your fight stick? I've never used my fight stick with MKX. Really? Yeah. Oh, is it because of the block button? It's because of the block button. Okay. That's bullshit. <laughs> Just hit back, for God's sakes. <laughs> I use it for Skullgirls. Yeah. But I won't play that against you and I crush you. <laughs> oh. That's not true. We went back and forth sometimes. You'll, speaking of... You'll get yours. Speaking of Street Fighter Five, can we talk about uh, the Christmas gifts we just exchanged? Sure. Ten days before Christmas? Perfect, yeah. yeah. You want to go first or should I? What are we doing? I, I got you Street Fighter Five. Yes, you got me Street Fighter V. I pre-ordered it so nice it. Doesn't, it doesn't exist yet. Well, it exists, but yeah. you know. That was very nice of you. Yeah, you got me a calendar. <laughs> yes. I gave a you... folded up, wrinkled calendar. I gave you my 2015 Adventure Up down. And yeah, great. Hanging in my room for a year. <laughs> this, this, is, this is, I think, equal. We matched each other I think very so. well. I also gave you a card that sings uh, Spanish music. Should we hold it up to the I pro- It's probably not legal, but go for it. <laughs> Alright, that's enough. <laughs> Alright. But uh, inside the calendar was tickets to a uh, Welcome to Night Vale live event. Yeah. Coming up next month. Uh, yeah. So that's nice. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I thought that would go on for longer. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about Street Fighter Five, Akuma is coming to Tekken 7. Really? Yeah. Awesome! I saw the, tr- like, they had a, a trailer for it, and it's like, who's the main Tekken guy? The old man with the weird face and the hair. Oh, yeah, that guy. You know? <laughs> he's, yeah, he's got, like, Wolverine hair, <laughs> yeah. kind of. He's like if Wolverine was going bald. Yeah. Uh, hey, Hachi. Hey, Hachi. It, the trailer is like his wife like sitting there being like, he's going to kill so many people. So if I can't stop him, swear to me, you'll kill him. And from like outside, this big guy is just like, as you wish, this will pay off our debt or whatever. And it's Akuma. Holy crap. <clears throat> Who's she talking about? She's talking about Hey, Hachi. Really? Yeah, she's like, she's like, my husband's out of control. Someone has to stop him. If I can't do it, you have to kill him. Because I thought she was talking to Heihachi about Akuma. No, because Akuma's the fucking like god of demons or something. Huh. All right. Yeah, <laughs> he's the devil. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but so yeah, and like it was announced as he's being added to like the arcade cabinets okay. of it, which means they'll probably be, that. that I think that's what the arcades are where they work out the bugs mm-hmm. for fighting games before like bringing that as DLC. Yeah, because uh, arcades are still a thing in Japan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's sad. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, um, I'm. No, it's good that they still have them. Yes, exactly. It, it's sad that they're not real in America anymore. Like you think they're. You think you see them, and then you run up and it was, oh, it's just an illusion. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that Family real. Guy thing. It's like, ooh, DVDs, uh, books. books. <laughs> It's, it's it was, just another subway. <laughs> the subways are awesome. Shut up. <laughs> we will get to a stage where arcade just becomes a Japanese word. <laughs> we it's not it's not a word that means anything in America yeah. anymore. Yeah. Well, in Japan, the game centers arcade is is an English word. Huh. Yeah. Oh. You ever watch that show Game Center CX? No. That show's amazing. What is it? It's a it's a Japanese show. 
where uh, a guy just tries to beat a, a very hard, like, <laughs> Famicom or NES game. It's all subs out. It's basically the original Let's Play. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's I, great. When you said it's a Japanese show, my mind went immediately to somebody sticking their head up through a thing and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and like, ferrets attacking their face. But uh, the host of... <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. But the host of it uh, is a guy named uh, Arino, or Arino, I'm not sure. But uh, he recently designed a bunch of Mario Maker levels, and they added his sprite to Mario Maker. So you can now get, like, a mushroom and become Arino and play through <laughs> Mario Maker. That, and it was so cool. The hell. Yeah. Well, speaking of... Because he's so popular. <laughs> speaking of Nintendo. Yeah. Did you see this? It's not an official thing yet. It's just, like, a patent they filed for what could be... A new handheld or an NX controller or both. I've heard of it. I haven't seen what it looks like. Though. It is. Here's the here's the childlike sketch they <laughs> filed with the thing. I'm showing you a picture okay. right now. Okay. It's it's an oval. It has two yeah two analog sticks, two shoulder bumpers, and what the article said was that in place of buttons, it's contact sensitive touch. Okay. So basically, picture a PlayStation Vita if the entire sur- front-facing surface was a touchscreen and the analog sticks came up through the touchscreen. This looks very small. Yeah. And these are these are joysticks. Yeah, each thumb. Huh. I'm not liking the look of this. <laughs> eh, I don't know. It's, I mean, who knows the scale it'll actually be. Yeah. But I kind of... I kind of like the fact that they're doing something, like, really weird and new without being gimmicky about it. I don't know. That looks pretty gimmicky to me. Does it? Yeah. Because it's really, it's just a larger screen when you get down to it. Or I should say a larger percentage of screen. I know, but it's all touchscreen. I don't like touchscreen things. Touchscreen games have been around for years and they've never been good. It feels like they're taking what they were doing with the 3DS and angling it back towards a more traditional handheld layout you know like instead of like all right we're gonna have like your main screen up here and your touch controls down here we're just going to go back to a single screen display and incorporate a mixture of touch and analog yeah but the thing about the 3ds was that you didn't have to use the touch screen most of the time is that just like a failing of Nintendo to really support the thing that they made, or is it just yes. like a they shouldn't have had a touch screen at all? <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. If it comes, I don't know. if it comes with a stylus, it might be okay. So I don't like getting smudges all over a touch screen. You can clean it super easy. My fingers are disgusting. You're like disgusting. I know. <laughs> Nintendo needs to support disgusting humans, and they're being racist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's. That's right. <laughs> I am a disgusting human being, and there is no support out there for me. Yes, well, I I look forward to the, the, the eventual announcement of what the hell Even they're actually tiny, doing. Even those tiny, tiny joysticks. Every time I touch them, I'll just be sweating grime all over the place. God, you're the worst human being I've ever met. I know, and there's no help out there for me, and I want. The... I don't know. What I'm trying to say. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I just like it because the picture makes it look like it's technology from the future. I think you just like the little slow man, snowman on it. Yeah, they have a little, little. they drew like a little street with a little man running down it just to simulate, oh, this is where the game will be. <laughs> I want them to do something weird that feels different than what they've done before. Yeah. Because Nintendo's constantly going on about how we want to make something new, but we don't want to make something that isn't trying something different. Yeah. And, like, that's why we had motion controls with the Wii. That's why we got the dual screen with the DS. That's why we have the Wii U gamepad. But then nobody, including Nintendo most of the time, ends up supporting most of that. Mm -hmm. So, okay, it's time to move away from that. And now they're trying trying something different again, which has more classic elements in there, I feel. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they could end up not even making this, for all we know. Because I I still... I still want the idea of it's it, the NX is going to be a console and a handheld and you just like put the handheld in it and then it shows up on your TV or something like that. And I don't know how that would work with that. Well, I mean, conceivably, it could be just like 
the same way you plug in to charge your game, your Wii U gamepad right now. You just yeah. put this on a thing and the, the game appears on the TV. That's true. It could be that. I would like to think it's more, you know, integrated. Hmm. Like there's going to be like a UFO, like, I don't know. There would be a UFO, like just flying around. <laughs> I'm trying to say, like, like I don't know, like you take it off and it looks like there's a piece missing of the console. It looks like it fits it. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. I don't know why I said UFO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. The only other video game thing that really happened this week is we got a shit ton of Yakuza stuff. Oh yeah. That franchise is coming here a lot now. Five, I think, just came out. Zero is coming out soon. They're remaking the original, and I don't know if it's a remake remake or if they're just upscaling the graphics, but they had like an eight minute cinematic trailer for that, and then they had a 60 second trailer for Yakuza 6. Really? Yeah. Wow. Which, out of all this, I'm kind of interested in that one. It's got, I mean, it's it's the general appeal of, oh, it's the newest, shiniest one, but <laughs> it's also like, from what little they showed... They just showed a bunch of gameplay of Kiryu running around in that city, like going across rooftops, climbing up and over and around stuff. And like, I think the the itch that gets scratched by that kind of open world game to me is, I want a game that is based in a real city that is actually on Earth that you could go to, but have it so accurately represented that, like, you can wander around and be like, oh, yeah, these are all the shops on this street, and yeah. you can go into half of them. And, like, like you could do that in the fourth one of these games. Mm -hmm. So if they can capitalize on being a generation or two later now and go even more in-depth with that, it's the kind of game where, like, I'll probably play the story for a while and then just live in fake Japan for a while <laughs> Because, like, that's the most interesting part of, of open world games to me. Yeah. Just, like, exploring a fleshed out open world that actually is a representative of a real place. Yeah. Like, I have no idea <laughs> what that Tom Clancy's Division or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what kind of game that is. I just know it's set in post-catastrophe Manhattan. And I hope I can just wander around. <laughs> <laughs> you used to live there, right? Yeah. It's something I always do whenever I, I'm playing a game that's in New York. I'm like, okay, can I find the place I used to live? All right, here's where Penn Station... Here's to Times Square. Can I find Penn Station? All right, can I accurately... And it's always like they just sort of approximate oh, yeah? stuff where it's like, oh, this there should be more street corners between Times Square and the Flatiron Building. But, uh, you know. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Two stars. <laughs> Yeah, Yakuza, uh, it looks interesting. Like, I, I'm interested in the gameplay and stuff, too. But I don't know if we can pick up Yakuza 6 and understand what's happening. Nah. <laughs> I'm, sure I'm sure it's fine. Like, doesn't that one building explode in every game? Yeah. And there's a fight on top of that other building at the end of every game? Yeah, so I think we're, we're good. We're uh, good to go. Yeah, I think we got it. <laughs> There's something else I want to talk about. Um, Psychonauts 2. Yeah. It's uh, up on FIG right now trying to get funded. It's at 2.6 million out of 3.3 million. And it has 28 days to go. Oh, it's fine. No, I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> we're getting Psychonauts 2. Yay. Yay. I've never even seen Psychonauts 1. <laughs> oh my god, we're probably going to play it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Isn't that a dull fine game? Yeah. Oh god, I started the video. Stop. Stop no, the video. Stop. Okay, we're good. Didn't you poison the well with me already with Double Fine? <laughs> we played probably the worst Double Fine game. But it started out as the best one, and I then know. became the worst one. The quality of the first half of that game is the quality of all other Double Fine games. Didn't, didn't this current... Not Kickstarter. Fig. Fig. Didn't this current... Fig starter. <laughs> yeah, didn't this Fig Newton... Like, wasn't this prompted as them saying, here's our goal, because this is how much money we made made uh, Broken Age for. Yeah. That to me said, "Oh God." Yeah, I said the same thing. <laughs> they're gonna make. They're gonna do this. And it's gonna have a great first half. <laughs> no, well, they said um, that's how much you gave us last time, and they're not just make like. <laughs> they're they also have um, like another investor, and they have a company, another company involved. So it's not just a three point three million. They have other people involved. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be okay. Uh-huh. It's going to be okay. Sure. Yeah. 
And this is another property. Yeah. It's, Broken Age was something... It was something different. It was an original property. Yeah. This is Psychonauts. They wouldn't mess with Psychonauts. Oh, this no. This the first Double Fine game ever. It's America's Sweetheart. Psychonauts. Yeah. Everyone's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> God. Well, I'm happy for you. I hope they don't screw it up. <laughs> You'll have at least a half of a good game. Yeah. <laughs> if half of Psychonauts 2 is good, I'm, I'll be happy. Oh, something else that dropped this week. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 trailer. Yes, there's actually been a bunch of trailers. Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. Sharing the name with that horrific game that came out, I think, last year. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. It's How did un- I not know about that? Unplayable. <laughs> wow. But... You really liked the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Yeah, it was not... Why? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about this. <laughs> so, so I grew up with the Turtles. I watched those first, the first round of live-action movies all the time. I watched the first round of the cartoon all the time. Played with all the toys. And as I grew up, I would revisit every now and then, like, whatever new Turtles thing was around. And, you know, they've had some good stuff. They've had some bad stuff. And then when I finally got around to seeing the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles movie, which he didn't direct it, it's his production company, it's Platinum Dunes, Mm -hmm. everybody was like, oh, fucking Michael Bay, he's gonna ruin it, why why do the turtles look like this, everything is bad, because it's different from what I grew up with. (laughs) And I finally watched it, like, a couple weeks ago, and it wasn't bad. You know, it it was exciting. Like, all the things Michael Bay usually does in a movie was there, but it was... They chose their moments, so things like slow mo or like the weird robot-y sound effects that pop mm-hmm. up, they worked with the moments they were in. Why were there weird robot-y sound effects though? Because 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 like that's fine in Transformers because there's weird robots in Transformers. Shredder had has like gauntlets where like he can he can like extend and retract blades. Okay, and like he he actually had this cool setup where like he can flail his arm and like shoot out a bunch of knives. Okay. And then magnetize them back to him so he can, like, cut you twice kind of thing. Okay, that's cool. And like, I haven't I'll... seen the movie, I should say. You should. And, and like, from a, a purely character design standpoint, the, tur- yeah, the turtles look different, but they look different every single time mm-hmm. there's a new turtles thing. Every time there's a new cartoon series. Every time there's a new live action movie. Every time there's a new comic book. The turtles always look different, and their origin is always different. The current comic series... <laughs> Has reincarnation in it. Really? In feudal Japan, Splinter and Shredder were rivals. And Shred- I forget their real names. And Shredder, <laughs> like, got the best of him and executed him, Splinter and his four sons. Flash forward to the present day, all these people reincarnated Splinter and his sons as animals that then got mutated by science. Huh. And as the, the series goes on, they're starting to, like, remember stuff. Like, at one point, Michelangelo just reads a book, and they're like, Michelangelo, that book's written in Japanese. He's like, what? (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. The outcry against this incarnation is just, it reeks of, it's too different from what I grew up with. Yeah. And also, this version of the Turtles treats them more like individual characters than any live-action thing ever has. Most of what we know of as their personalities comes from the cartoons. Mm-hmm. So people re- people think of, oh yeah, Donatello, he's the smart one, that kind of thing. You will not find that in those original movies. Oh yeah? Yeah, it's not just people apply the knowledge they have from the cartoons to everything else. Okay. But the trailer for this new one, like even people who didn't like the last one are like, holy crap, this looks kind of cool. I thought cool. this trailer looked amazing! And I haven't seen the first one... I assumed it was going to be garbage because of Michael Bay. I assumed you were wrong. Ugh. And after I saw the trailer for this one, I tried to find the movie on Netflix and it wasn't there. It's not there. Where did you see it? I ended up finding it on Hulu. Oh, okay. So I'm not going to see it. No. <laughs> I mean, if you do, um, if you do, I do and just do a free trial. <laughs> that's how I watch Stephen Universe. That's true. Uh, yeah. It was it was up on Netflix for a little while, but I guess nobody... Nobody watched yeah, it? Yeah, I added it to my queue, but I never got around to it. Oh, okay. And it was just gone one day. That reminds me. How's Samurai Flamenco going? Funny story. Oh my god, I've been trying to get him to watch this anime, Samurai Flamenco, which is fantastic. It's on Netflix. How, how's it going? I'm, gl- I'm glad you segued into this. Yeah? Because 
instead of watching that... How is this a funny story? Why did you just watch it? <laughs> because instead of watching that, I watched three other series <laughs> <laughs> beginning to end. Why didn't you just watch Seven of the Lego? <laughs> it's one season and it's great. I know, but you know. <laughs> what shows? Do you want them from best to worst or worst to best? Uh, best to worst. So best to worst was... I can't understand what my husband is saying. Oh, yeah. We were going to um, <laughs> Crunchyroll Crunchy the other day, and we saw that. It's, that it's, looks interesting. It's basically, and it's two seasons long, but each episode is only about three minutes. Okay. And it's literally just, like, this couple who just got married. He is a really creepy fanboy, <laughs> and she is terrified of dying alone. <laughs> And it's just, so she won't leave him? And it's just their daily life. It's like just like a slice of life. Like, there is no real overall story arc kind of thing. Okay. It's just, like, really, this really nice... It's one of the best relationships I've ever seen huh. in anything. Because there's never any, like, oh my god, will they, won't they? Like, are they gonna get together or break up? Is it? It's just them navigating all of this, like, just small, relatable stuff in these little three-minute chunks. That's really nice. Yeah, I would recommend it. I hope there's gonna be more. Okay. All right, what's next? <laughs> next, I I I'm gonna say this wrong. Waka Kazuki. It's it's a show about it's a it's again it's another like twelve episode long two minute episode thing which it has a thirty second intro so it's really <laughs> each episode is really ninety seconds. <laughs> but it's it's a show. I feel like. A, I feel like I've told you about this before. It's just this this lady who goes around and every episode she just eats something else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you were telling me about that. If you're one of the people who would like just watch the Food Network for fun, you'd mm-hmm. probably like this show. The most interesting interesting thing to me about it is how economical they are with storytelling. They use the opening credits as setup, where it always shows like, like, oh, it's been a long day at work. She walks out and on her way home she sees a place and goes in. And then like the story starts as just oh she's in this place now and what am i gonna order and why am i gonna order it and how does it make me feel and what are the people around me saying and the animation is if they did anything else with it it would be the creepiest thing in the world (laughs) like let me get a picture actually Oh, oh yeah that's creepy those are like they all look like dolls wow it's like happy and normal kind of stylized Except the faces are like weird doll baby yeah. faces. Yeah. And what's the third show? The third one. Is it Puchimas? <laughs> what the hell is that? Puchimas. <laughs> you don't remember that? What are you? <laughs> that was the show that you kept trying to remember what it was. Is that what that was called? Yeah. I don't think it was. It was. Uh... Was that like Idol Master? Or no, something? it was uh, Puchimas. Um, something, something Idol Masters. But the Puchimas was in the title. So because I... at the end of every episode, they said Puchimas. So I saw, at one point, I saw, like, a clip or trailer or something for that show. And it was just, like, some girl goes to the beach and some people give her this weird baby that keeps biting her. And it has a giant head and looks at, like, bread like it's gonna fight it. And I we spent, like, a half an hour... That is how he described this show to me. And I was like, okay, do we have to find this show? He's like, yes. Yeah. And we spent... It was longer than a half hour. But it was worth it. No, it wasn't. <laughs> and uh finally we watched like three episodes of this show and it was interesting. <laughs> it was uh yeah, Puchimas, I think it was like Fetal Idol Master. I I don't know. Yeah. It it was just like a bunch of people with a bunch of like weird little clone babies of themselves yeah. or something. There was a man who had a P for a head. Yeah, it just was just the letter P. The letter P, yeah. yeah. So what was the third job? <laughs> the third one. It's something, it showed up on Netflix. I was like, oh, maybe I should watch Samurai Flamenco. Hey, what's this? <laughs> it's called Yuki Yuna is a Hero. Okay. It is a magical girl show. Uh, this is the worst one of them. This is. Okay. And it's really a shame. Because it's, it's one of those where it's like, okay, these girls have powers, but they come at a price kind of thing. Okay. The short version is that the more power you use, the more toll it takes on your body they go all out in one of their fights and then afterwards you know one of them can't see out of her left eye anymore one of them has partial hearing loss another can't taste anything anymore that sort of thing one of them 
is mute now, can't talk. And it sounds good. And this has been going on for a long time. There's been generations of this happening. So they, there's this, like, there's your typical, like, behind-the-scenes organization that figures out, like, who the best candidates are kind of mm-hmm. thing. And they're being reassured left and right, like, oh, yeah, this is just temporary. Don't worry about it. But the further it goes, the more you start to find out that, oh, no, it's actually, this is actually permanent and it's going to get worse the longer they fight until they're used up and replaced. Okay. And it gets even darker with stuff like, like, they meet one of the pr- the prior generation who's, like, in bandages, doesn't have all her limbs anymore, can is barely, and, like, the power has a built-in fail-safe to keep you from dying. Oh my god. So, like, you're immortal, and you're forced to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Like and like one of the one of the girls before this all started, she was already in a wheelchair. Okay. And then she started losing her hearing from it. And then she's like, I can't take this. And she tried to kill herself. And then she found out that that failsafe prevents that from happening too. Oh, okay. So no matter what you can't die. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And around this point is where the show kind of falls off a cliff. Okay. Because They give a revelation that should be significant, which is the girl in the wheelchair. This is not her first time being picked. That's why she's in the wheelchair. Yeah, that's the reason she was in the wheelchair is because she lost... She was a magical girl first. Gotcha. And she doesn't remember it because one of the other things that was taken from her was like two years worth of memory. Okay. So like when she woke up in the hospital one day, couldn't feel her legs... Or remember anything, her parents and the doctors just said, oh, there was a car accident or something. Okay, that's kind of cool. It is, but they don't really focus on it at all. Yeah. Like, it's not treated like it's any kind of big deal. Okay. Which sucks because, like, what she does next is the entire catalyst for the ending of the show. Oh, okay. So that falls flat, and then afterwards, for no reason whatsoever, they all just get better. What? <laughs> they go all out one more time, fight the thing, and they're all in even worse shape than before. And then after it's all over, the one girl notices, hey, I can kind of see out of my thing again. And, like, the mute girl starts talking again. Even, like, the girl like she, the girl in the wheelchair even starts, she can hear again, and she's getting the use of her legs back. And I'm like, okay, they could still pull this out, you know? They could still, because the the main character of the show... She is catatonic in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, okay, is it going to be one of those things like, I took it all on to me kind of things? You think like, oh, okay, and we're we're getting towards the last five minutes of the series. I guess that's, are they going to end it on like a bittersweet note? Like she sacrificed herself kind of thing. Now she wakes up. Did the thing that they fought at the end, was it like the source of all the evil? No, it was just another wave. What the, what the hell? For a good while, it was it was a show about the heavy price of power, the burden of being a hero. Yeah. And then it just sort of threw that away in favor of having a generic happy ending. Yeah. Turns well, out there is no price to power. Yay! Do whatever you want, there's no rules. <laughs> and, like, the shadowy organization let them go and all that stuff. And, like... <laughs> and like the including like the agent they brought in to be like, all right, you're the fifth member of this team because they're all rookies and we've been training you for your entire life. And then she just emails them one day. It's like, can I stay at this school? And they're like, yeah, go ahead. What about the people who lost limbs? Did they grow back? Nobody lost any limbs. Oh, okay. But it's like, it just, there was no consequences whatsoever in a show that seemed to be all about consequences. Yeah. Like this really is... It's a worse version of another show I know I've recommended to you, Madoka Magica. Yes. The only way I could conceivably say this is better is that the animation is smoother and cleaner mm-hmm. and looks more high quality. But again, that could just come down to a stylistic choice. Yeah. But yeah, I was really disappointed. And what's the show called? This is Yuki Yuna is a Hero. Yuki Yuna is a Hero. Yeah. Okay. That's disappointing. Yeah, if you go into Netflix's anime section and you see something that's mostly pink, it's that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, I watched something else on Netflix, too. Yeah. I forgot about it. Uh, a Very Murray Christmas, I think it's called. Is that Bill Murray thing? Yeah, it's a Bill Murray Christmas special that came out this year. Is that new? Yeah. It's about an hour long. It was very funny and cute. It was just, um... 
It was just about Bill Murray trying to make a Christmas special in, like, the biggest blizzard New York has ever seen. That's cool. Yeah, so none of his guests can get there. He doesn't want to do it. Paul Schaefer's there. I think Paul Schaefer lives with him. <laughs> and I was going like... to say, at some point, is this just Bill Murray talking to hand puppets? <laughs> and it's like, Amy Poehler is, like, one of his producers. And uh, there are two female producers. I recognize the other woman, but unfortunately I can't remember her name. So he goes downstairs, and, like, Paul Schaefer's playing music. And he's, like, he's singing along... He's a terrible singer, and, like, he doesn't hide it. It's it's very funny. But, like, this, in the beginning, he's just stressed out about it. He gets better later on. And so he's just like, I can't do this. None of my guests are here. Just play a football special or something. So he goes outside, and, like, Chris Rock is at the door, and he's just trying to get inside because it's so cold. And he's like, oh, my God, Chris Rock, you're here. He's like, I'm doing a Christmas special. It's like, it's the biggest blizzard in the world. Why are you doing a Christmas special? It's like, well, none of my guests got here, but now you're here. And now you're on the Christmas special with me. It's like, no, I'm not. I'm just trying not to die. <laughs> so he drags Chris Rock inside, and then they're both on the Christmas special. And then the power goes out. So he's like, thank God the power's out. Chris Rock is gone. He was in it for like five <laughs> minutes. He just ran off. And uh, then later, like, it's just, it's just a lot of fun. There's like... There, there are a bunch of songs. Jason Schwartzman's in it. Uh, George Clooney comes on later. Miley Cyrus is in it. It's, it's great. It's just fun and this nice. Is, everything about this is like an SNL lineup from yeah. 10 or 20 years ago. Yeah, it's great. It's really nice and fun. All I'm thinking is that the SNL announcer saying these people's names now. Yeah. <laughs> With musical guests, Miley Cyrus. Yeah. But it was just really nice. Is that a Netflix original thing, or is that mm -hmm. all over the place? No, it was a Netflix original. In fact, I saw it, because uh, we were watching, me and my mom were watching the Netflix, like, best, not Netflix, it was the best of Saturday Night Live Christmas sketches. Okay. And then it, the first commercial was for that. <laughs> and we were like, well, that's clearly a Saturday Night Live sketch. <laughs> but then I was watching a YouTube video, and that commercial came on. And I was like, holy crap, it's real, we have to watch this. Remember when that happened all the time, when Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live was super popular and people would get confused over, is that a sketch or is that a real commercial? Yeah. It's kind of like how people now see Onion articles that they think are real. Yeah. Yeah. I miss those days. <laughs> I got fooled by a April Fool's thing once and didn't find out until like a year later. Cause I, it was um that crazy guy that owns Virgin Airlines was mm -hmm. talking about glass bottom airplanes. That's so cool, that'd be a great idea. I know, I thought it was real, because he's crazy. <laughs> yes! But it turned out he was just playing an April Fool's joke. But he actually said it? Yeah, at like um, a press conference or something. Damn it! Yeah. <laughs> so he is crazy, and he actually said it, but it was just an April Fool's joke. Yeah. It was like, um, recently, uh, Marvel and Fox, or, or maybe Sony, I don't know, they were... It was rumored that they gave the rights back to Marvel for Fantastic Four. Oh. And everyone was posting about it. It was like, this is awesome. And then Marvel and Fox were like, this never happened. <laughs> they both put up our there and say, like, no, this didn't happen. We're both evil. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone got sad. The only other thing I wrote down was, did you know IDW is doing a ongoing Power Rangers comic? I did not know starting, that. Starting, I think, in January. Cool. And the guy writing it described it, it's starting out as kind of like Green Ranger Year One. Oh, where that's like, so cool! <laughs> like, he didn't want to do origin stories, so what he's doing is like, okay, we're saying it right after the Green Ranger joined the team, and we're going to kind of get from his perspective. Okay. Because, like, that, that's kind of, like, it lets him be, like, the audience surrogate a little bit, because all, all this is new to him, we can meet everybody through that, and that kind of thing. Yeah. And they're doing a thing that I'm interested to see how this works out. Like, it's, it takes place in that era of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but it's set in 2015. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. So it's kind of like an alternate universe Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah. Awesome. And he's talking about stuff like, like, it's not going to be, like episodic villain of the week kind of thing okay it's like this is going to largely be like rita's revenge story against mm. them and against tommy and there will be a reason for a bunch of monsters to come after them but once you see what rita's plan is you'll get it okay 
And like he's like, and he's like, the writer's talking about like, like we can do things in comics because it's a more serialized format than the show was. Like he described a scene where it takes place in the Dragon's Lord's cockpit, but it's in stasis. So like you look out the window and you just you're like, wow, I'm on the bottom of the ocean. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and like I don't know have if you've seen any of these any of the covers for it. No. But like like the first issue has like a main cover and then seven variants. <laughs> but they had a good read. So like this is the main cover. Okay. And then it's, you want... it's the Green Ranger fighting a bunch of putties with the other rangers in the background. And then just start scrolling. Okay. <laughs> now See, there's the blue ranger. Yeah, it's like these cool like Oh my god, it's all Like, Screen painted Rangers? quality, like, a torso, like, a shot of, like, the torso of every ranger holding yeah. their helmet in front of their chests. That's so cool. And here's, uh, the, the NX, uh... Yeah, the, N- the <laughs> NX variant is great. Yeah. But yeah, so, like, because when I heard, like, oh, they're doing a Power Rangers comic, I was like, oh, how good could that be? Yeah. Because, like, it's gonna be, it's, it feels like it would be one of those, like, who is this even for? It probably has shitty art, kind of. But it's for us. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like they're at, it, it sounds like they might actually be doing something that I would want them to do, which is treat the Power Rangers like a regular superhero comic. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm probably, I'm going to wait for, like, a trade and, like, samples of it and stuff mm-hmm. first, but, yeah, I'm really interested. I'm, I, I hope they genuine, genuinely do something interesting with this yeah what was the last time there was a power rangers comic i feel like there was one a few years ago that was just everything you don't want oh, okay or like it looked terrible and it was just sort of like badly done fan service kind gotcha. of stuff earlier when we were talking about the teenage mutant ninja turtles <clears throat> trailer yes you said a couple trailers dropped this this week we oh, we didn't go back to that, did no, we? No, okay. we didn't talk about the other trailer that dropped this week. The other three? <laughs> well, I know of one. What one do you know? X-Men Apocalypse. Yes. That looks awesome. That looks amazing. Yes. Did you see there's a poster of of Apocalypse from the side holding a skull, and it just says at the top, it just says Survival of the Fittest. No, that's so cool. Uh, this is great. There's so many more x-men in this thing like cyclops and gene and little kid nightcrawler yeah and storm were all in that trailer yeah i know and storm's one of the four horsemen yeah yeah so is angel looks i like. know they're finally, he's archangel they're finally doing something with angel i know yeah. finally <laughs> it took like seven movies i mean he was in that one but it doesn't count it doesn't count no but that looks great and and mystique and magneto they're back on the good side <laughs> Was that Mystique? I didn't... Because I don't think she was blue in the trailer. No, no, she was uh, hot and blonde again. Oh, good. (laughs) Yeah. As it should be. (laughs) Is is that the girl from the the Hunger Games? I don't don't know. Okay. (laughs) I didn't see any of those. That's another movie I hate on principle, (laughs) yet I haven't seen. Girls, gross. I want to get movie cooties. (laughs) That's how it works. That is how it works. Yep. But yeah, that looks good. I'm glad that after four movies that the best you could say is that they're kind of okay. They got to, we got to a stretch where they're doing really good ones now. Yeah. First Class, really good. The Wolverine, really good. Days of Future Past, really good. Mm-hmm. And now this one looks really good too. Yeah. Yeah. I love that scene where Apocalypse picks up Xavier in the wheelchair. Yeah. And is pulling down a hallway. I love the one where it showed off Apocalypse's, so- like, because he has every yeah. weird power you can name. Oh and, like, God. there's a part where, like, Xavier tries to punch him or something, and he, not only does he catch the punch, he grows to a giant and just slams Xavier <laughs> into the ground. He's just crushing him. That was crazy. I know. So what are the other trailers? The other trailers were... Independence Day Resurgence. Really? Yeah, they're making that. You know that Independence Day sequel you've been wanting, Rob? <laughs> the one that you ask me every couple weeks. Hey, are they gonna make an Independence Day sequel? What well, letter writing campaign paid off? You know what's weirder? Jeff Goldblum's in it. What about Will Smith? No, no. I think there's I, I think he may have died between movies. His character. Are you serious? I think because they showed like I don't know who this guy was. There was another like main character action guy is he black i don't think so okay that's i guess that's no i don't think maybe i don't remember <laughs> there was a i saw you the, don't see color i saw the trailer once and there's i just remember oh i recognize those two guys and there's a person and another person that i don't know who they are so they're i don't know 
I know like the the dad like Jeff Goldblum's dad from the movie is in it again too. Okay. You know the one who was all like he was on the plane with them. He was like the nervous. Nope. Whatever. <laughs> Good news, he's it's back. It's been ten years since I saw that movie. But like they did a super effective trailer thing where they took the best part about the first movie, which was that speech towards the end. Yes. And they played it over the trailer. But it sounded like you were hearing it over an old radio. That's cool. Like, it was super effective. And at the very end where he said, this is our Independence Day, this, it, he cut it off. They cut it off when, like, the words Independence Day just came up. Yeah. It was like, it, I mean, it's a movie, like, the trailer makes it look really good. But at the same time, you know exactly what you're getting kind yeah. of thing. Because, like, they, did, they had the detail of, like, after we beat them, we took their technology and used it to enhance our own defenses. So, like, Earth has, like, laser turrets and shit. Nice. That's cool. But, yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm curious. Yeah. I'm curious. Also, Will Smith was making concussions, so... <laughs> what? You haven't heard about that movie? What the hell is con... Oh, is that that sports yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. Although that's, like, out now, so that probably wouldn't interfere with it. Yeah. 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 That's a movie where he's, like, involved in the NFL and he's trying to get them to stop killing people. <laughs> <laughs> Wimp. So what's the other movie? Actually, isn't he making Suicide Squad right now? He is making Suicide Squad right now. Wow. I think that's a better choice. <laughs> Then in the, I don't know if that's going to be a better choice than Independence <laughs> I don't know. It might be. The other one so. is a movie that uh, the trailer just came out today, which is Star Trek Beyond. Oh, is this the third of the Jabums? Yes, though I don't think he's directing it. Really? I think, I don't know, I didn't pay attention, but I think I, think I remember hearing that he wasn't going to just because he was busy with Star Wars. Mm-hmm. It, it looks like it's going to be a movie that could have been an episode kind of okay. thing. Because, like, the trailer shows, like, oh, the Enterprise gets attacked and maybe destroyed, maybe crashed, whatever. All of the characters you care about got off in escape pods, and now they're stuck on this planet with these other aliens. It's kind of like a Predators kind of setup. Okay. And it's all like, like, oh, I know why you're really here, blah de blah I mean, it looks interesting, but yeah. it's, it's kind of like, oh, no, I feel like... I know everything about the movie, except specifically why they're there and whether or not their ship exploded. Yeah. John's probably furious about this. It might be. Yeah. Uh, do you ever see something in a trailer where you look at it and you're like, why? What? Why? Why'd they do that? <laughs> yes. Why would they ever do that? Because there's a scene in the middle of this trailer where someone on an alien planet jumps a ramp on a dirt bike. <laughs> And it doesn't seem like it's some weird space dirt bike or anything. It sounds like a regular dirt bike. <laughs> Is it Kirk? It might be. It's probably Kirk. It, it sounds like a thing he'd do. Yeah. But. Oh, man. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, this feels like it's going to be like a Star Trek insurrection kind of situation. Yeah. Where that felt like, oh, it's just a Next Generation episode that's kind of long. Mm -hmm. There was a cool line from a villain in it. It's like says something like, now the frontier pushes back, or something like that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's a good line. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. A lot of these trailers have forgettable names. Yeah. Like, Star Trek Beyond. Like, alright, whatever. Or, and like, what was the... Independence In Day, something? Re Resurgence. Resurgence, okay. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, I feel like every name, like, once you hear it enough, it's good enough. True. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's probably going to be a bunch more trailers by tomorrow. Oh, yeah, or... probably. Is that Ghostbusters movie supposed to be next year? I think so, yeah. Yeah, why yeah. are you looking at me like that? <laughs> <laughs> you look at me like you don't believe me. <laughs> That's just how I always look at you. <laughs> I won't stop doing it. But speaking of next year, since I don't know, it's close enough to Christmas. Who knows if we're going to get together next week or not. Mm -hmm. right, what are you looking forward to? In 2016. Oh, that's a good question. Because <laughs> I thought about... Cause so, something that I keep hearing people talk about is how, oh my god, all the games are coming out next year. Oh, so many. And I thought to myself, it can't be that many. It can't be that many. And even if there are, there can't be that many that I would want to play. So I, f I looked at a couple lists. Mm -hmm. I checked Wikipedia and I checked some other thing. It was like game... Stop or Spot or Fly or what? Some some <laughs> some website that has game in the title. Yeah. 
I'm like, all right, well, this list is kind of huge, but I mean, let's go, let me just go through it. And I'm like, okay, at first I'm, I'm breaking it up by month. You know, January has Darkest Dungeon finally comes out. Mm-hmm. February's kind of big, you know, Gravity Rush Remastered, Mighty Number no. 9, Street Fighter V, Fire Emblem Fates, and <laughs> Street Fighter v. that's when you're, you're going to be getting <laughs> Dead or Alive Extreme 3, <laughs> yeah, most likely. Yeah. You know, Definitely looking forward to that. March, you know, Uncharted 4 and Star Ocean. April, Quantum Break. May, Mirror... Oh, Quantum Break, that's a good one. May, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. June, No Man's Sky. And, like, that's kind of... I'm like, okay, you know, it's... it's that's a, a solid it's, list right there. It's kind of top-heavy with February, but, you know, that's that's not that's not a whole lot, you know? Yeah. Then I'm like, oh, here's a, the rest of the list of stuff that doesn't have confirmed release dates yet. Really? But they're just, like, for 20, 2016. And I'm going through the list. I'm like, oh, Attack on Titan, Bravely Second, Final Fantasy XV, Gravity Rush 2, Horizon Zero Dawn, <laughs> The Last Guardian, that new Zelda for Wii U, Mass Effect Andromeda, Nier Automata, or however you say that, Nino Kuni 2, Paragon, Persona 5, Pokemon <laughs> Tournament, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Scale Brown, Jimmy Gami Tensei Crossfire well, Emblem. Rise of the Tomb Raider is already out. That's just coming out on PS4. Yeah, that was practice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and I'm like, I'm looking at this, I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> this list is huge, and my list is like an eighth the size of the actual list. It's insane how much is actually coming out. It's going to be a big year. If nothing else, I can take solace in the fact that I'll still have new stuff to buy for the PS4 once we're two years into the PS5. <laughs> it's just so, like, is this the first big push that this, that this generation has gotten? I think this year was pretty good. Was it as huge as next year? No. Because <laughs> no. this year, it's been like a lot of like remakes and stuff and ports, yeah. right? Well, next year's going to have that too because they're, they're getting uh, PlayStation 2 ports to the PS4. Yeah. And Did... Xbox One's finally going to have a, a bunch of Xbox 360 ports. Didn't they announce like four games for the the PlayStation ports or something like I, that? Uh, I don't know. They ha- they So far, all they've announced is uh, Star Wars games, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the Nintendo's going to have a new console, probably. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. It'd probably be that thing that you hate. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, so what's one game, one movie, and one something else you're looking forward to next year? Oh, God. Game, well, game I kind of have to default to Persona 5. Mm-hmm. Which was supposed to be out already, but then they're like, um, summer. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I can't wait. I love the fact that I don't know anything about it, and I've only seen four characters. Because yeah. that's, that's, if it's anything like the past games, that's less than half of them. And I have wow. no idea what the story is. Like any other game, if you've seen four characters, you've seen the entire cast and then some. <laughs> Persona is kind of like a fighting game in that the characters are what make it. Mm-hmm. And they all have something weird and different about them and how they play and their backstories and all this stuff. And, uh <laughs> And it's, and it's, it, I'm, I'm just, this is the first one I'll have played on, like, a console instead of a handheld. And just the fact that the trailer shows that it's big enough that it needs a world map on screen all the time. Oh my god. <laughs> and like, oh Jesus, I can't wait. Movies, I mean, out of the trailers that we've seen, the one that looks the most entertaining and is the most proven is probably the Turtles. Yeah. But I'm, is that next year? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I'm really I'm looking forward to seeing how they do with that Ghostbusters movie, mm-hmm. which I think is coming out next year. I think so too. And other than that, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I feel like there's so much coming out next year that, and realistically, a lot of it might get pushed another year. That I just kind of want 2016 to just show up and show me things. Yeah. And be like, here, love this! <laughs> I'm looking forward to... Is Star Fox next year? Yes. I'm looking forward to Star Fox, definitely. And I'd say movies, Ghostbusters. Yeah. Yeah, more than, probably more than the thing you said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen to you. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, I'm looking forward to that Power Rangers comic. Yeah. I just learned about it. <laughs> That sounds awesome. Yeah. Damn. So is that going to be it for this podcast? I think that's it. I think that was a good first episode. Yeah. Yeah. First episode of our Big Dumb Podcast. Yeah. Which 
for all I know, we might end up calling our big dumb podcast. <laughs> I think Epic and Ghost should be in there somewhere. Epic Ghost Big Dumb Podcast. <laughs> So, people should check out our YouTube channel. Yeah. Which is Epic Ghost Punch on YouTube. Yes. All one word, Epic Ghost Punch. Not on YouTube. <laughs> Epic Ghost Punch. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we mainly just play video games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's some other stuff on there, though. Yeah. I mean, we've got a solid two months of content worked out for it. Yeah. For the coming year. As this goes up, we're finishing up with... Uh, with Broken Age and mm-hmm. Tower Fall Ascension for now. For now. We did enough to round out the year. Yeah. And after, like beyond that, I think we're about to start Shantae, Risky's Revenge, and uh, yeah. Lost Orbit. Cool. I don't know what we got coming up on the channel. Cause really? Never... <laughs> no, because <it>, that... <laughs> we record so far in advance, I will forget what we've played. <laughs> well, that's fine. We'll t- we'll I remember Shantae because I've played it so many times. <laughs> You probably played it on the way here. I, I beat it again before. That's, you. Why, that's why you were so late. That's yeah. why you were three minutes late. No, I was buying you your Spanish card. Oh, God. <laughs> so much thought. So much thought yeah. went into it. it. A lot of thought did go into it. It had to be funny and random and interesting. I told you I wanted to buy you a Hanukkah card, but they didn't. They, 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 I'm telling you, that store's racist. <laughs> Great. Could not find a single Hanukkah card. Perfect. Yeah. Uh,. If people want to send in emails, why, where can they do that? Nowhere yet. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, I'm probably going to put episodes on YouTube for a little while okay. until we get a regular podcast feed set up. Sounds good. So if you're hearing this, you can easily see all of our other content and, you know, leave a comment or something yeah. if you like it or hate it or want to tell us something or just want to have non sequiturs you want to throw out there. Sounds good. Yeah. And uh, if you have a question, just leave it in a comment. Yeah. All right. All right, see you next time. Bye.